Before we get started, we wanted to thank Matchstick Golf for being our first title sponsor. Matchstick is a custom designer of ball markers based in Portland, Oregon, that was born out of its founder getting sick and tired of trying to find cool ball markers that weren't huge, heavy poker chips that didn't cost $300 on eBay. Matchstick's markers include the one-eyed alligator from Happy Gilmore, a stack of cash that will have you putting for dough. Right now, Matchstick is offering 15% off your first order at matchstickgolf.com with the code MUNICIPALS. So head on over to matchstickgolf.com, enter MUNICIPALS at checkout, tell them Big C in Ashton sent you. How hard did you push it? Till I black out? Yes. Numerous times, yes. Pals, Big C and Ashton back again. Part two, Bay Area public golf course list. So we're going to start off with the East Bay. We're going to work through the South Bay as well. One thing I came across kind of going through my map and, and figuring out all these courses is I didn't really realize the lack of of great courses in the East Bay. And it was kind of sad. And it's kind of the same thing with the South Bay as well. Everything is really spread out. There's not as many options as you kind of get in the North Bay. And I think a lot of that has to do with a lot of courses closing, especially, you know, like there's Roddy Ranch was a really great course at close. Um, there's a lot of courses kind of in the Pittsburgh Antioch area that have closed over, over time, which kind of minimize the amount of options, you know, in the area. So, you know, this is, this is kind of going to be my favorite list. So one of my favorites and kind of an interesting story um, that Ashton's going to tell one of my favorite courses, when I was living out in Pittsburgh Antioch area, I played here often uh, a lot. Um, they had a really good uh, membership deal where you could buy packages of rounds. And I think it was, oh, don't quote me, but the rounds ended up being like 30 bucks a round with a cart. And it was a really great rate. What I love about this course, um, the course is called Lone Tree. And it's out in the Antioch, uh, Brentwood area. And what's great about Lone Tree is a few years ago, they switched all the grass over to Bermuda. And because the Bay Area is always in a drought, and I think a lot of other courses could definitely benefit off of this. And I think it might be the route why Karika Park, which is going to be another course we're going to talk briefly about, went Bermuda as well with their course is because there is a massive drought in the summer. Bermuda doesn't need a whole lot of water to keep going. It kind of grows like a weed, and it's very spongy. So it, it's very absorbent of of kind of any moisture it can possibly get. And it, being in the Bay Area, we have fog. That helps out a little bit with Bermuda as well. But in the summer, that goes dor- or in the winter, it goes dormant. And so it's very easy to maintain because you're not having to water throughout the, so you can conserve a lot through the fall and winter time. And so when Lone Tree switched over, the greens just became impeccable. I mean, they're hard as a rock. If anybody's putted on Bermuda greens, they are rock hard. And they run smooth. Um, they, they do sometimes over sand, but it's a great course, but I had one opportunity before I moved back to Portland to play out there with Ashton and there was, it it was kind of a funny situation. Ashton was starting to, uh, I didn't really know at this time, but I guess he was, um, talking to a girl online and I'm going to lead it over to Ashton to kind of finish that story because it's a a great story and kind of where we are at now well yeah like of course you know especially back in my single days uh 
man, like my weekends were not, not only full of golf, but I mean, that's where it's like when I first met Jack, I think that in our first few months of knowing each other, we had just a lot of 36 whole days. Cause we were both, you know, single and loved golf. And I mean, I think one of my favorite days we did Lincoln park and then Creek at where in the morning we were freezing, you know, Dawn patrol freezing in the afternoon. It was like 85 degrees in the East Bay. And we had a lot of those kind of days. So, you know, basically Chris is like, Hey, I got a tea time. And every week I was like, yeah, I'm in. And so I had had on the Wednesday, I had had a really great first date with, you know, my now <laughs> girlfriend, Liz, and we were supposed to play, you know, Chris and I were supposed to play golf on, on Saturday and, you know, love where you live, but it's like a fucking million, million years from where I live. And, you know, Liz and I were going to hang out on Saturday. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess we'll do, you know, we'll do something in the evening. But I just had a feeling I was like, eh, like I, I just knew the day was going to go long. I want to be late. So I canceled on Chris. I was like, yo, like I love you, but this, this is more important. Um, and I had never told Liz yet that I had golf that day. Um, so yeah, so canceled on you suggested that me and her meet up. Like, you know, I think it was kind of a, like early afternoon, like two or three o'clock. And then that night we basically closed the bar here in, in San Francisco and the rest is history. So could have, would have, should have played Lone Tree, but uh, canceling on you and not playing Lone Tree um, has been one of the most impactful decisions ever made. So can we take it out there and experience it? Because I feel like I want to like shake the hand of the person who built that place because it's very special for a course I've never played. But um, yeah, canceling on Lone Tree is, is why I found the person who I love most. So Lone Tree will have a very special place in my heart, just back that I have no idea what that course looks like, plays like, or anything like that. So there's the story. One of my favorite stories because it brought Liz into our lives and it, we both are better people knowing, knowing her cause she is a wonderful person. So you are a nice, you are a, a great human. And I will say one quick note, you know, this is kind of jumping back to the, to go from Liz to grass, but this is a golf podcast. It's interesting. Cause just to piggyback what you were saying, Chris, you know, as a kid, when I was like a kid, kid, you know, like, five, six, seven, eight, kind of just playing golf. A lot of courses in Atlanta were bent grass, which for people who don't know, bent grass does well in kind of cold weather climates. Um, and the greens, I remember playing courses where the greens were awful because when it's a hundred degrees in Atlanta, bent grass can't do it. And the only way to compromise is just to cover it in water, like cover them in water. So I, we'd play greens where it's like, you know, you, you hit a wedge on the green and like it's, you know, it, it backspins this gigantic crater because it's the softest greens ever. Like Ben Grass is great for like Michigan, Chicago, places like that where it's colder. Um, and then, of course, a lot of places move to Bermuda. But then, of course, I think the advent that really changed a lot of things in the South was uh, Champions Bermuda, which is this kind of like hybrid that they built. So, for example, Cuscoil that I've talked about a bunch. Cuscoil, you know, one of Core Crenshaw's first designs back in 97, bent grass greens. And I don't know how many years in, but while I was a kid, they literally ripped apart all of the greens and put in Champions Bermuda. And I mean, it just changed the South in a lot of ways. Like Atlanta, like they have these amazing kind of hybrid Bermudas now, and that's all the kind of good courses in the South are now hybrid Bermudas. Cause yes, it gets a little bit cold in the winter time, but you really got to protect these greens. Cause again, if it's a hundred degrees, uh, you can just kill bent grass. But to the point, I think Bermuda is an interesting experiment out here because the climate's way different, but I just grew up on kind of bent grass versus Bermuda. And they also play super differently. Like bent grass, you're going to take like in Chicago, when I've played in Chicago, like you have bent grass fairways, like your divots are like three feet long, you know? So it's just interesting how all these different, uh, grasses play. Um, but yeah, like again, in the South, that hybrid Bermuda is where it's at. So it's interesting you're saying this makes me want to get out there because I can't really say I, like, I don't know my grass as well, but there's just so much POA out here. Um, be really curious to go to a place knowing it's Bermuda and see it. So I'm definitely excited to get out there. Yeah, you got to You got to take a trip out there. Um, it's it's worth it for sure. And then, you know, talking kind of Bermuda. Well, that'll lead us kind of into Creek of Park. So more inland, right on the water on the island of Alameda, um, just uh, west of, of Oakland, 
over a, just a little bridge onto the island. Um, Karika was kind of a kind of a just a local, you know, spot, local muni that you know really only people in Oakland and Alameda played. And then they had Reese Jones hired to do a redo. It there's two full 18s out there that were original out there, and he basically bulldozed both golf courses and rebuilt the entirety of it of what his designs were on the property and we both have played the north course multiple times we've had or i'm sorry we've both played the south course north course is the new course that is finishing up they've had um previews of nine of the holes out there but they haven't fully opened the entire course but the south course has been the one that's been open for close to two years now about a year and a half and it is awesome australian sand belt design wide open bermuda um you know fairways the the back nine is 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 really tight when you get into those back three holes um and the finishing front nine might be my favorite three holes like stretch on the East Bay, I absolutely love seven, eight, nine. It's just a really fun group of holes. Short par three, gettable par four, and a really long par five. It's just like a really great, well planned out um, series of holes, and and it's just really fun every time I go out there. I will say, Karika is getting fucking expensive. I think they raised their rates even more. Like when they first opened the South course, it was 75, 80 bucks to play, which was a little bit on the pricier side. You know, like we were talking about in the last episode, we really, we like to be in that 40 to 60 range. That's kind of our, you know, wheelhouse if we can be there. But Karika, for what you were getting for $80, it was worth it. It was absolutely, in my opinion, worth what you were getting. It's a wonderful design. Now we're approaching 90 to 100 around out there. I, I think it might even be eclipsing over 100 on weekends. Um, you know, don't quote me on that. I might be a little wrong, but I know they've definitely raised the prices. And it's it's gotten a little, little out of reach for some that can play there. And it might be more like a Harding park at, at this point where it's just somewhere where you go and play as a treat and not necessarily your, your normal, um, watering hole. But I know for local Alameda residents, they do give you a very, very good rate out there. Kind of like San Francisco takes care of you with their rates, but Ashton has played, the preview of the nine on the North give a little bit of insight on kind of how that design compares to the South. Yeah. So I think that, um, you know, and for those wanting to, you know, me, friend of the pod, JD, friend of the pod, Ian, we played out there and we did a hour long podcast about the North course. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. The South course is the championship course. It's where if you want to go really get tested, um, that's where you want to play. If you just want to have fun, you go to the north. Uh, like we've talked about, the, the the two main holes on the north that really stand out to me. I'm not even going to share the number because what I've been told is how the holes are routed. Like, for example, number eight now is going to be number 17. So it doesn't really matter. But there's a par five where, you know, JD hits it. A, he fucking mashes the ball. Um, JD hit driver pitching wedge. But the green is so complicated that he, like, worked his ass. Like, he barely two-putted, if you know what I mean. Like, the green was really, really complex. So it's a par five, but in a very different way, right? It's not like it's going to, you know, again, he hit pitching wedge in. uh, But the green complex is very crazy. There's a beer it's. There's, like, a really penalizing bunker. And then one of the craziest holes I've ever played, or most memorable for sure, uh, number eight, that'll be number 17, is a uh, 240 yard par four. Um, and what JD talks about on the podcast is it being so smart, right? Because um, if that is a par three, everyone's going to bitch, 
right? It's too hard. It's not fair. Uh, but then the way it is there is, you know, I got up there and I, I made the joke, not even thinking this way, but I was like, I guess we got to make a birdie. And JD goes, that's why it's a good hole because you're thinking on, a, because it's a par four, you think you should make three. But if they're telling you you should make three, you're going to bitch and moan and complain the whole time, right? And that's why it's a cool hole. And I just haven't played a 240. Like JD, JD hit an, JD hit a hole high with a two iron. That's cool. It's a par four. Yeah. Very untraditional, right? And you could border, you could almost say it's goofy golf. I wouldn't say that. But like, you know, if you're going to like go to a championship course and you're hitting two iron onto a par four, unless it's like, you know, British Open or something, you're going to feel like a little bit like, huh, I don't know. But the fact that they have both of those courses there is wonderful. I mean, I think it would just be at some point, you know, Chris, when they're done, fuck price you know have you come in the summertime and we'll play south in the morning north in the afternoon like what a day like what a day but to your point it's not only that prices have gone up the other thing which um i mean i get it but i think all of us find so offensive it's the reservation fee so if you are trying to make they allow you to make it well as we know we've talked about this and jd has some insider info people are I don't know why it's the only course I feel like is doing this. People are using bots. So at, cause when Nick was in town, I tried at 12, I stayed up till midnight trying to get a tea time and I refreshed the page at midnight. The first available tea time was three o'clock. I'm sorry. That's just not how it should be. Right? So what they do now is if you're making reservations more than two weeks out, it is $50 non-refundable, non-refundable. Does it go towards your rate? To make a tea time. No, wow! No, it does so not. they're charging fifty on top just to reserve. Yeah, and pay. So for me as a Bay Area resident, yeah. So basically, Karika, if I book, if I want to play there three weeks, my dad is in town. If you want to think about it as total fee, we're going to pay one hundred and fifty a man to play South, and I love that. But like, I mean, in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about this. I'm going down to Poppy Hills to play when Nick is in town. Poppy Hills Twilight rate is eighty bucks regardless of where you live. Like. It's just that they, 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 they're, they're sort of losing the plot. It, it, it's a great course. It's a great facility, great food, great drinks, nice people, awesome clubhouse. My coach, Brad, shout out to Brad, is there. Like, it's a great place. It's just, it's bordering on too expensive. Yeah. And JD also told me he's an Alameda resident. He says that they're, they're increasing the Alameda resident rates at the same rate. They're increasing the, the other rates as well. So it's cheaper. But if it's a 20, I'm making this up. If it's a 20% increase, it's a 20% increase for them too. So you're saving, but you know, they're not trying to necessarily look after residents. So I don't know. It's a place that I love a lot, but to your point, like I'm just not gonna go pay 150 bucks to go play Creek of South. Yeah. Not. And kind of on the other side of that, two other courses that I'd recommend anybody to play that's on the east east side. Um I would recommend Tilden Park and Monarch Bay. And what why I kind of pair them together is if you do live in the East Bay, um, they do have a great uh, deal where you can join their member uh, membership either at Monarch or at Tilden. Um, you can make either one of them your home course, but then get the same discount rate and uh, accessibility to this app or website that they have that allows you to book for a very, very cheap rate. And most of the time it's like 25 to 40 bucks to play. And Tilden is this beautiful piece of property built up in the the hills of uh, Berkeley. And what I love about Tilden is when you drive up to the golf course, it feels like you're leaving the city behind. And when you're playing the course, it's so peaceful and quiet. But you're literally just barely outside of the city of Berkeley. But it's a it's kind of a a park and reservation that Berkeley, the city, has kind of put aside um, for recreational use, and it's it's a wonderful track. It, it I will say the first hole might be my least favorite hole in the entire Bay Area. Um, it's a really really stupid 45 degree like 50 degree fucking grade uphill par four that runs like 420 and it's just nobody i've it might be longer than that i don't even know 
but it it is it is so infuriating to play that hole. Nobody I know loves to play that hole. No, it, when it, it's the first hole too. Like I, one of my favorite things in golf is like a handshake first hole, right? Where it's like you you make a a, a par or a, a comfy five and get out of there. And the first time I played there, I kind of hit a. Granted, again, I hit a kind of a wipey driver to the left, like not super solid. I hit my two hundred and thirty yard hybrid short of the green. It's like, I mean, and I'm not like a you know, I'm not trying to pump myself up, but I'm not like a short hitter. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I kind of looked at the group and I was like, does this hole suck? And they're like, this is the worst first hole in golf. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> but awful. I like the rest of the holes. I've only played the first nine holes, but the rest, of, the rest of it was a lovely experience. I'm really like number three. It's like a straight downhill par four. That's like really fun. And, it's like a really exhilarating. And you, play. if you really catch a ball on part on the third yeah. hole, like you, in the summertime, you can definitely drive. The you green. can. Yeah. I've seen guys, roll it has a dip kind of like a a french drain that runs along the front of the green so it will slow your ball down it does take a lot of momentum and you have they have like a service road that runs in the middle of the fairway so to be able to get the green you do have to carry the service road and hit the down slope and be able to get there because if you land it uh, on the fairway prior to the service road, the service road will slow it down because it's all made of like rocks and gravel. So really, you won't be able to get it there. But if you're a guy that can carry that service road, yeah, I've seen it a few times. And then you get a really nice par three after that. That's a nice little handshake with a with a um, bit of a backstop. Kind of allows you to play into, and and the course then just really opens up into this beautiful parkland and. It, it's a great parkland golf course. A, a, anybody that's in the Bay Area that wants to just have a beautiful day, visit Tilden because it, it really is a, a wonderful piece of property and, you know, something that I hope never changes because it, it is old school. They haven't put a lot into the clubhouse and into the uh, into the restaurant, but it's just exactly what you need. I mean, they're... they're They've got a little pop-up window when you r- roll through the nine onto ten. It's this elevated tee box that you hit down into this valley, and they've got this little walk-up window. You can order some food. Great, great facility. I, I really enjoy it out there. Not much of a practice yeah. facility. I really need to play the back nine. Yeah, you you got to play the back nine because the back nine, it, there's – I, I would say there's a mix of holes on the front nine and a mix of holes on the back nine that I really love. And then there's some quirky ones that I don't. So, but it, it's definitely a f- one of one of the tracks that I've probably played the most because I did only live about 15 minutes from it. So it was kind of like my Presidio. Um, I played Tilden a lot. Yeah. And so, you know, pairing up with that, Monarch might be the best views in the Bay Area for the price. If, if I'm going to say that it's great, it's right on the, you know, the back. Uh, so there's one, two, there's three, four holes uh, right next to the clubhouse that really aren't um, views of the water. But right when you cross over this kind of waterway channel that they have, where they have these bridges that you cross, you enter into kind of a whole nother world. You know, they've got these four holes that are next to the clubhouse that are kind of feel parkland, inland kind of kind of holes. And then you cross these bridges into these other holes, and it's just a complete change of landscape. I mean, you have all these trees on these on these four holes that are close to the end. The four holes are back nine and front nine holes. Um, and so you you play kind of over this waterway multiple times but it opens up to this i don't want to call it link style but it is very linksy for the bay area if if i'm going to say any type of landscape it's just these rolling hills with this fescue and no trees out there it can definitely be affected by the wind heavily um but on a beautiful sunny day, I mean, you cannot beat the views that you get out there. You can see all the way to San Francisco. Um, you can see across all the bay. You can probably see about four bridges from the golf course. It, it's just 
it's a spectacular time while you're out there. The only downfall is pace of play at Monarch Bay. Hell yeah. The, the absolute slowest. I I had kind of a funny story. So I've I was playing out there and I was playing with these with this really nice Korean couple um, and, and their friend. And she was playing from the same tees as me. And these two guys that couldn't be five, couldn't be taller than five, 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 six were playing from the back tees and they couldn't hit it longer than two twenty. And I, by like the third hole, I asked them, I'm like, why are you guys playing so far back? That can't be fun. And their response was, well, we want to get our money's worth. And I looked at him and I said, well, I mean, it, it can't be fun to to barely make the fairway from back there. And they're like, well, we want to get all the shots we can. It, that's just not the type of golf I subscribe to. Like, I, I don't want to shoot a 98. I don't want to hit a whole bunch of shots. But I feel like that's kind of the mentality out there. there it's just everybody's kind of in their own world and you can get stuck in play a five to six hour round out there. It can be absolutely miserable, but also in turn, the people that run the clubhouse and, and the facilities are wonderful. And our, our buddy, Brandon, good friend of the podcast is basically the person I know that's probably played out there thousands and thousands of times and and we used to go out there and play before we had to go to work at golf mart and and we'd get out there at 6 30 in the morning and jam through two and a half hour round it was awesome so there are times you can get through it it is a wonderful course i don't want to deter you from checking it out but monarch bay can be a little bit of a beast when it comes to pace of play but wonderful piece of property in use yeah and, and i would say one of two things either be the first group off or the day that I met JD, I just played nine holes, right? Yeah. I played an afternoon nine holes, like do one or the other, but yeah, if you're doing like Saturday at 10 AM, don't you're go, go play another course. Yeah. Go play another course. Don't play, don't play Monarch at 10 AM on a Saturday. It's going to be brutal. Yeah. And Chris, actually I just realized, and then we'll move on, but what you were saying too about orientation is a good example there. And JD is going to help me realize that. For example, like the first par three, like I think on the card is only like 180. It, it plays like 40 yards longer because it's always dead into the wind. And so like when I, when I was playing with JD and his wife, Katie, we were jamming and then we get to the par three and there's a group on the tee, a group waiting and then us. And it was like, and JD goes, it's always this fucking hole. Um, so that's a good, that's a good example of what you were saying where it's the layout because again, they have this pretty hard par three that's dead into the fan. And especially if people playing the wrong tees, like I think JD hit like fucking four iron, you know, and he fucking mashes it. It's like, that's the struggle out there. But yeah. Get out there early or play a, a leisurely nine holes, which I would suggest because being out there in the evening is, is really, really beautiful with the views. It also slows down on the turn because you, and you start the back nine on a par three right next to the driving range. And it always mm-hmm. gets backed up there because people spend forever trying to get food. The one thing I could tell them is they need a walk up window or they need, you know, a faster process because, you got to go inside, order your food. They don't have anything ready. People always are buying stuff on turn. It can cause a lot of issues, especially with that par three right there. So, yeah, I think design yeah. is a big thing at Monarch. I love the property, but the design of the course can be fucking brutal with pace of play. Um, down the street, sure. one of our, I would say, collectively, the municipals love this track. Uh, Cal also calls this their practice facility. So they've got their own private practice facility out at this golf course and it's called Metropolitan Golf Links. So it's an interesting property because it used to be a landfill and it's right next to the Oakland airport. You literally have 747s flying over your head by like a hundred feet. Like they're barely above you. Um, 
and it's very interesting, um, you know, piece of property, but well thought out uh, design in my, yes. in my opinion, mm-hmm. um, you know, very high fescue, um, you know, rolling Hills, but it's fairly flat. You don't, you don't really see undulation, but the way that the fairways kind of have these, these rolling mounds through them, it, it can, you know, cause you to have a little issues depending on where you're landing your ball. Um, they have a lot of kind of protected areas around, around the course as well. And, the one thing I will say about Metro, the greens are in really good shape always. I mean, and, they, and, and they've been trending up. Like everybody in the RGC chat has been like, greens are awesome. Greens are awesome. Greens are awesome. So yeah, that place is fantastic. I mean, I know famously when Hussey and I did our pod, we both said we liked Metro more than Monarch Bay and you took exception to that. But the point is like, they both have gigantic gold stars. They do different things. Like to your point, like you're playing a par three and you have, you turn around and you see like a private jet feel like it's landing on top of you. It's a very different vibe than Monarch Bay, but like so great. And also too selfishly from the city, it's just not that far as you cross the bridge, take a right. And it's kind of basically right there. So pretty easy for everybody to get to, I think. And very welcoming to, to youth players as well. Um, they, they were so gracious when I coached high school golf, that was one of, um, the tracks that were on our rotation for places that we got to play. And they always treated our kids so well. Um, it actually, you know, hurts my heart, but that was the last, tournament that i I was there ashton was there because we left and kind of went on a little golf adventure through through um southern oregon that's when we went and played bandon and coos and was it a little golf adventure when you went to bandon it's a little golf adventure um but that was my last uh uh coaching outing or coach outing with my kids from from irvington high school so it, it hurt my heart a little bit to leave. I almost, I almost broke tears out there because, because those were my kids, and I, and I really loved being able to spend time and coach those guys. So, but I have a, I have a very big heart for Metropolitan. So please go out there, spend your money. Great rates. Can't say much, you know, many bad things. And I'm glad to hear that the greens are trending uh, in a positive light because that course definitely needs to be shined upon. And then going just a little inland uh, out towards uh, San Ramon area, um, there's a place called Canyon Lakes. Really fun track. One of my faves. Uh, my One of my really close friends, uh, Dave, actually is a head brewmaster out there. So Canyon Lakes is cool because it is a brewery golf course. So you don't see these very often. You don't see them around. But basically, the owner purchased this golf course. It was supposed to be a country club. They couldn't get enough members uh, to join. So the original owners decided to put it up for sale. This guy wanted to own a brewery, and he's always dreamed of owning a golf course. So he decided to buy the property and build a brewery in the actual um, restaurant area. So... My buddy Dave, he is a fucking master when it comes to brewing beers. I mean, this guy will usually have 8 to 14 different types of beer on tap at all times. He's won, it's got to be close to 100 awards at this point um, for his for his mastery in brewing. And it it's a one, it's a really fun fun track it is built within these houses so there are some quirky holes within it but and it's not the most walkable course the front nine is definitely walkable back nine is atrocious to walk i mean not fun at all but it's a really good course and i recommend anybody that's in the area go say hello to dave tell him big c sent you He'll take care of you and, and enjoy Canyon Lakes because it's it's a gem. Skip the um, – I would just say play Canyon Lakes, skip the bridges. The bridges is fucking – what people say is a better course, but it is the most difficult course I've played. It is penalizing and way more expensive. Play Canyon Lakes over playing the bridges. 
um, just south of Canyon Lakes, Las Positas. So what really fun track. Um, not much to talk about. It's just always in good shape. It's pretty flat. Um, kind of just a square piece of property that they, they were able to fit, you know, 64, 6,600 yards on, um, it, it's a, it's a fun property. And, and if you're in the, the one thing I, I found out with East Bay, there's just not a lot of golf to be had in the East Bay or good golf and everything's kind of spread out. So if you are in the Livermore area, Pleasanton area, Las Positas is kind of what I would recommend in that area. It, it's a fun track, well-maintained. Um, Corsco ran um, golf course, and there's a lot of Corsco ran golf courses. Um, Crystal Springs is also one of them. And, and they, they do a, a really good job of just maintaining and keeping a budget-friendly course for the locals. And so if you're in the area, Los Positas is, is a good one to check out. And then finally, kind of for the East Bay, Poppy Ridge. So Poppy Ridge is cool because it's got three three nines at Poppy. So they, you can kind of go out there and rotate kind of what holes you get to play. And there's different routings that people prefer. But Poppy is a really cool, um, really cool golf course helped run by the NCGA, which is the Northern California Golf Association. And... If you are a member of the NCGA, you get a really good rate out there as well. Um, It's built into these uh, kind of hills, foothills. Um, The one thing in the area, because it is built out in Livermore, when you play in the summer, it can be brutally hot. Um, And that's for any of them in any course kind of in that area. It, It just can be brutal in the summer. You can be high 90s to 100 in the hundreds and it it can be really really tough to play uh, in the afternoon out there so i'd recommend in the morning but poppy ridge is is cool they they went through some trials and tribulations they it wasn't in good shape for a long time i know over the last three or four years they've done a good job of kind of getting it back into good shape and um, it's definitely worth playing it is on the more expensive side you're going to be about 90 dollars a round out there so Poppy Ridge can be a little pricey, but worth worth checking out. And that that's kind of our, our thing in, in the East Bay. Again, there wasn't as many courses. You know, I'm in love with a lot more courses in the North Bay. The East Bay, just it's spread out. We've lost a lot in over time, and there's been a lot that have been turned into housing developments and torn down. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but um, that's kind of – what I would say is best for the East Bay. So we're going to get into the South Bay. We're going to add the South Bay into this pot, this episode as well. And one course I really want to start off with, and I'm going to let, um, and it's one that I know producer Jack has been really badgering Ashton to go play. And it's a course called um, Baylands. So Baylands is kind of in the Palo Alto, Santa Clara, like it, in between the two of them. Um, it It's kind of similar. I, I consider it kind of like an alternative to Carica Park. Very similar type of layout. Not a lot of trees, very wide open, rolling hills, kind of an Australian sandbelt style golf course. They've got a really good practice facility. I know producer Jack is out at Baylands all the time working on his game. Um, and it's, it, anytime I'm in the South Bay, that's kind of my go-to place. If I'm going to put in some practice, um, I really enjoy that track. Um, the course well-maintained again, Bermuda. So it dies off in the winter and then you've got really fresh greens and fairways in the summer. It's just a really spectacular track again it can be i mean for the bay area good tracks are going to be pricey unfortunately and so you're going to be looking in that 80 90 range to go out and play it to play baylands but you can catch it on good deals there's times you're going to be able to get some decent deals out there and i know that if you play any of the ncga events or 
um, any of the uh, Bay Area golf guy events, they they both hold tournaments out at Baylands. So you can always hop in one of those tournaments and, and get a decent rate out for that. And uh, one course very close to that and close to Jack's heart and somewhere that Ashton recently got to play was Moffitt Field. Um, so Ashton, I want you to talk a little bit about Moffitt because that is one that's kind of mysteriously slipped in, in my in my list, and I haven't gotten out and played Moffitt. Yeah, man, Moffitt was a uh, Moffitt was a trip because um, we've talked a lot about you know it feels like you're playing golf on the moon. Uh, this felt that way, but you're playing on a military base. Um, and Chris, you may, you can help me with this. Cause I think you probably know this. Is it air force or no, it's NASA, right? It's, it's NASA. A, NASA space yeah. Center. So Moffett field is a NASA space center. And if you grew up in the Bay area, you went out there and got to see kind of the, uh, you got to see the whole facility. You probably did a, a field trip at one time in elementary or middle school out, out to the facility. But I actually didn't even know they had a golf course out there until probably about four or five years ago. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, well, the first thing I'll say is you just build an extra time. Cause it's really, really confusing how to actually get to the golf course. Um, but once you do, it's, it's a wonderful track, really interesting holes, really great greens. Um, and, and honestly really hard. I mean, like, I, like I just, I don't know what, I mean, I was also in the middle of a swing change, but I just got punched in the mouth, man. Like that course is, uh, it's all you could possibly want. And so, uh, I definitely thought it was a little bit on the pricier end. I mean, similar idea. I think Jack, cause Jack had been thinking about the rates because he's military. Um, I am not. So I was definitely paying a different rate than Jack, but I don't think it's a course needed to play all the time. And because of the price point around 90 ish dollars, it's, you know, for me to drive an hour to pay $90, I'm just not going to do it that often. But, I thought Moffitt was awesome, especially because on the back nine, I think number 10, 11, 12, I think 13, uh, it's literally like the airstrip. So I had a, took a picture of Jack where it's straight up like, you know, he's hitting a shot and there's like a, a plane, you know, kind of sit right there. And so it's a very, very unique experience and certainly one worth, worth, uh, worth uh, experiencing, especially if you have to be military because you're going to be getting a fantastic green rate out there. Yeah, so I'm excited to get out to Moffitt. I need to get out there with uh, producer Jack um, since that's now kind of one of his his favorite um, courses to have in his rotation along with Kalipa and Karika there. Um, next one I would get into, one that I played as my childhood, one we talked about in one of the first podcasts that we, that we did about all the childhood courses that I played, and that would be Deep Cliff. So... Deep Cliff is an 18-hole track kind of built in this really interesting area. Uh, it's just kind of this sunken meadow-type feel, uh, and it's a par 68 uh, 18-hole track and really tight piece of property. You cannot hit it all over the place. Most of the time, you're not going to hit driver out there. There's may, There may be three or four holes you're maybe three or four holes you're going to hit driver but you need to play it safe on most of the holes out there because you're just going to get boned there's giant trees that overhang into a lot of the uh tee boxes that cause issues there it's really tight you know tree line property so you have to keep it in in between the mustard and the mayo to kind of keep you know keep your score low so it's a fun track to kind of you know, work on accuracy, work on approach shots. They have done a wonderful job of really, you know, rent, um, keeping the greens in metac- or meticulous shape um, for how many rounds they actually have out there. It's, it's always packed. I mean, they always have, have junior clinics out there and they've got a great group of, of guys that run, run the facility. So, Um, if you're ever in the area, check out deep cliff. If you're looking for a quick executive 18, that's the way to go. Um, deep cliff is, is wonderful in that aspect. 
and kind of on level with that um, par 68 kind of thing. I think it's actually par 67. Uh, it's a course called Los Lagos. Uh, just in San Jose, it's kind of in a weird area. So it's actually not in a nice area of San Jose. It's right next to Andrew Hill High School. Um, if anybody grew up in the Bay Area, I played football when I was in high school. We never wanted to go play Andrew Hill because there's always a fist fight that happened to Andrew Hill. So, it, I mean, it was not a nice area. Um, still is not a nice area, but a really, you know, great je- gem of a course. You know, wonderful, you know, little shoehorned golf course into this tight piece of property. And it's meticulously maintained. I, I swear it's one of my favorites when I was in high school to play because it challenged you. They had holes that you could open up and hit with driver, but there was a lot of really short par fours and interesting par threes. Green complexes are really huge. The first hole shares the green with, I think it's, oh, it's one of the holes on the back nine. I can't remember what hole it is. Um, but it's really cool because just shared green, really big piece, you know, um, piece of real estate the green takes up. Wonderful fluffy bunkers. It, it's just a, it's a really fun course. And for a course like that to be in a metropolitan area like it is in, in a little bit more of a, a low income area of San Jose, Um, it's really great to see that because it gives the opportunity for um, a lot of people that might not necessarily have a great track to play, to have an opportunity to play. So Los Lagos is a must to go play. If you, if you're trying to get, you know, a little bit more of a quirky design in something, change up your rotation, check out Los Lagos. Um, Another course that, Ashton has recently played is Cinnabar Hills. So Cinnabar has 27 holes on the property. No matter how you book your tee time, they rotate you between the 27. So you, you'll get a different 18 hole routing every time you go out there, uh, depending on the day. And it's a meticulous course and hard built in the foothills, just just on the outskirts of San Jose. Uh, Ashton, what were your takes first time you, you went out and played Cinnabar? Uh, I loved it, man. It's a place you had said a lot about, and I think it even exceeded my expectations. Um, the biggest thing is the greens are not only good, but very complex, uh, like putting surfaces. I think it's a place there's a lot of kind of pinnable locations um, and a lot of variety of kind of shots you got to hit. And I didn't get to play the third nine, but the fact that that is the DNA of the course combined with a third nine can totally see why if you live in San Jose, that's just a place you'd beat up because it's got everything you want. Like you're not going to just be like, it's the same course. It's the same shot. It's the same course. It's the same shot. Um, a lot of diversity and great conditions. I don't know what else you can ask for. You really can't. And I and I love courses that have 27 holes because it, it just gives you a flexibility of, of different routings every time you come out to the property. So, I you know, anytime that a course has 27 holes, it, it intrigues me and makes me want to come out and play more because I want to be able to experience all the different routings that they can offer. And, and that's something I really loved about Poppy Ridge that we talked about in the East Bay as well with the 27 holes as well there. So check out Cinnabar. It can be a little bit on the pricier side, um, but it's well worth the money for the conditions that you get out there. And then a really fun course that I like, Ashton hasn't been able to play yet, Um It is a Jack Nicholas design. They have two full 18s out there. They have the Valley and the Tournament course, uh, Coyote Creek. So this is on the far, far outskirts of San Jose, on your way out to Gilroy. Wide open piece of property going underneath the freeway, coming back, built into the foothills. 
really wide open green complexes, fun to putt on, always in great shape. Probably one of the best practice facilities. I was very um, privileged in high school to have Coyote Creek as our home course and practice facility when I was in high school. And they've got a wonderful grass range with three great putting and chipping areas. And I would, I would recommend Coyote Creek to anybody on their way from Monterey from the Bay Area. Stop in there, play 18, get out to Monterey, spend your weekend out there, play a bunch of rounds out in Monterey, and enjoy Coyote Creek on your way there because you got to drive right past it. It's 100% worth it right off the freeway. Great, great course. And then we're going to kind of jump into um, – the foothills of Santa Cruz. We don't need to get into it too much. Everybody's talked about it. We know what this course is. We know how good it is. Pasa Tiempo. I mean, you can't leave this place out. I know it's not in our 40 to 60 range. It's about eight times that. Um, but it's 100% worth it. If you've never played Pasa Tiempo, treat yourself, pay the rate. Everybody knows anything about Pasa. It is Alistair McKenzie at his finest. I don't need to get into it. You guys know Pasa is what it is. One course that I think everybody also should play on their way to Monterey. It's one of our buddy Brandon's favorite courses. He talks about it all the time. It's a little course called Seascape Golf Course. So just south of Santa Cruz, up in the hills of of the mountains right off of the ocean you don't get a lot of ocean views you get peaks of it here and there but in my opinion it's a poor man's uh monterey pines so if anybody knows about you know monterey golf courses monterey pines is a wonderful golf course out in monterey and in my opinion i get very similar vibes when i'm out at seascape you get these beautiful you know um sequoia trees and and redwoods kind of mixed all in in one you get kind of harding park vibes out there with kind of like tunnel vision with the trees coming through the the fairways and seascape is is it go out play seascape it i i'm just telling you if you if you like monterey pines If you like those other courses, you're going to absolutely love Seascape. It's always in great shape. Prices are reasonable for the location it's at. I'm going to tell you, you're going to enjoy it. And one thing I hope you guys all enjoyed was our take on our favorite courses, our list for Bay Area uh, public golf gems. So We'd love to hear you guys' feedback. If you have any, DM us. Tell us if there's some that you think we need to check out that we might not have. That would be wonderful. But I hope you really enjoyed these two episodes because we really enjoyed putting these ones together. So, Yeah, and Chris, thank you. I mean, again, I know you did most of the talking, so appreciate you sharing your treasure trove of knowledge. There's quite a few courses you have shared that I can't wait to experience myself. And a lot of the courses I've played were driven by you as well. So excited to get out there and uh, yeah, thanks for sharing the knowledge, man. Yes, sir. Have a good one, fellas and ladies. Peace.